rainforest and forest in general provide a critical role in the quality of all life. We are just beginning to understand that the health and the vitality of these forests directly affects the quality of human life. For example, rainforests function like lungs, pumping out fresh, clean, oxygenated air, balancing the carbon gases emitted by our heavily industrialized world. It is purported to also be home to an amazing 50% of all Earth species, including those plant and animal species yet to be discovered. In fact, it's been estimated that only one half of 1% of all higher plant species have been extensively studied for their medicinal properties. Over 70% of plants with cancer-fighting properties are found in tropical rainforest a true pharmacopoeia of possibilities. In addition to being a source of medicine and clean air, thriving forests provide protection from the spread of disease, including malaria. In protein-rich still waters, the female mosquito lays her eggs. These floating green canopies are ideal places not only for mosquito eggs, but for baby fish like piranha fry, because they offer protection from their predators. These piranha babies hide here and feed on algae and mosquito larvae, thereby helping to control the mosquito population. As rainforests disappear, insects, birds, and animals that naturally prey on mosquitoes lose their homes. Many of these animals will die, unable to adapt to incoming human developments. Others will move deeper into the forest until they are forced once again to flee or adapt to human encroachment. Without natural predators, the mosquito population is able to breed rapidly. Some species of mosquitoes, more specifically the female mosquitoes, may carry deadly diseases such as malaria. Malaria has been known to man since 2700 BC, and some scientists suspect that it even existed during prehistoric times. According to the World Health Organization, malaria is responsible for almost one million deaths per year, most of them children. It is only the female mosquitoes who bite. The female requires the protein-rich blood to help her develop and lay her eggs. For every nest she lays, she requires a new blood meal. Malaria is caused by a parasite. When a female mosquito bites, she inserts two sharp syringe-like blades into the skin to pierce the blood vessel. She then injects her saliva containing anticoagulants which thins the blood to prevent any clotting. This allows the mosquito to drink the blood freely. In addition to anticoagulants, the mosquito saliva may also contain tiny parasites, which cause diseases like malaria. It only takes one tiny parasite to enter the bloodstream and reach the liver to cause severe damage. Once the malaria parasite enters the liver, it latches onto a liver cell and begins to mature and multiply, overwhelming the liver cell and causing it to rupture. Steadily, the parasite invades other liver cells. Once matured, the malaria parasite, or merozoite, uses the liver cells as camouflage and squeezes itself through the liver membrane and into the bloodstream, undetected by the body's immune system. Once in the bloodstream, the mature parasite latches onto a red blood cell host to continue the next stage of its life cycle. The malaria merozoite continues to reproduce, overwhelming the red blood cell. Once the blood cell burst, it exposes other blood cells to the malaria merozoite and the cycle continues.
By this time, the victim begins to experience high fever, violent chills, sensitivity to light, enlarged liver and spleen, and fatigue. If a female mosquito feeds on a human infected with malaria, that female mosquito becomes a carrier of that disease. Remember, a mosquito does not cause malaria, it is a carrier. The only way that the disease is spread is if a female mosquito bites someone else and releases the parasite in their bloodstream. How do we stop malaria? Is there a cure? Modern medicine still uses the same source today as it did hundreds of years ago, but as synthetic derivatives used to produce anti-malarial drugs such as chloroquine and mefloquine. The key alkaloid is quinine. The source, the bark of the cinchona tree, originally found in the higher elevations of the Amazon rainforest. Peruvian legend has it that it was the puma that discovered the cinchona bark. One day, a healer saw a frail and weak puma move slowly through the forest. He saw the puma make his way toward a tree with tiny bell-shaped blossoms. The cat clawed at the tree and began to chew the pieces of bark that fell off. For the next few days, the puma returned to the same tree and chewed the bark again. Each time the puma returned, it seemed stronger until finally the puma returned no more. The cinchona bark became known as Indian fever bark. Today, synthetic versions of quinine, like mefloquine and chloroquine, are widely used. However, increased drug resistance to these synthetic versions have caused us to reconsider the original natural source, quinine. Once again, we turn to the forest for more answers. <laughs>